Hello, I'm Camilus. Today we are going to talk about the origin of Chinese people. Let's get started. Start from this video. Sometimes I will give references because most of these ancient books in reference do not have an English name. I will write in original Chinese text. If you are a sinologist or a native Chinese speaker, maybe you will be interested to check these ancient books. But it's not the case for most of the people. We only need to follow the story and understand its context. To this subject is a little bit abstract. So let's start with something we are familiar with, the countries and the nations. Anything has a reason to exist. Why there are so many different countries in this world? Why do we need to build different countries instead of building one country for everyone? Because the world is forming and developing by competition. If there is a competition, they are winner and loser. Human beings was trying to survive on this planet, competing with all other living beings. When surviving is no longer a problem, the population starts to grow, and more resources are needed. Different people start to compete for the same resources, so they could not avoid to fight against each other. The cost of becoming a loser is very heavy. To have more chance to survive, the best way is to gather more people from bigger community to fight against their common competitor. This community was tribe, and now it is country. This world is still far from common, so human beings cannot stop to compete with each other, cannot avoid to use military force or other powers to exploit each other. Because inside a community, there are different social classes. The people with higher power can judge and stop improper, illegal competition. But between different communities, this kind of higher power doesn't exist. The United Nations is merely an organization that different countries can gather their power to deal with various international events. It cannot give order to all countries in the world. It is not the strongest economic entity, and it doesn't have the strongest army to stop improper competitions between all countries. Nowadays, we still see violence everywhere. That's why country is still the most important community for us. Like an eggshell can protect its baby. If our own country is not organized, stronger countries will come to violate and exploit. When a country is strong, able to defend itself, it will become a best instrument for its people, and people will be able to grow and compete in this international environment to better contribute for our global development. There are many people in the world. Why some people can become one country, some separate into two countries? The most important reason is the difference of nations. And the root of a nation is culture. The development of a culture, consciously or unconsciously, always leads to the assimilation with others, then become a greater common culture. Yet the process takes hundreds of years and could not be done immediately. Before the different culture become common. The people within a same culture can cooperate, defend their competitors together, but the people between different cultures could not. We can see many examples in history, when different nations are forced to be together, intense conflicts will start, and when one nation is forced to be separated, they fight to death to reunify themselves, such as Germany and Korea after the World War II. This is the reason why today there are so many different countries exist. However, there are many countries not formed by a single nation. In China, there are 56 nations. It's considerable the biggest amount of nations in a country. 
The main nation in China is the Han, which amount 92% of the Chinese population. Each of these 56 nations have different languages, cultures, and histories. In this video, we are only going to talk about the Han nation. The origin of Han is hard to precise. Ancient tribes do not have their written language. If there is a bigger, earlier civilization beside, and the Chinese civilization is a latecomer, its history can be recorded by this big civilization. But there is no earlier civilization beside the Chinese ancestor. From the very limited recordation in books, we can find some information. But this information is lack of geographic constraints and mixed mythology with reality. It's barely reliable. One of the most famous explanations is that Chinese ancestor comes from the Kunlun mountain, which is located in the upstream of Yellow River. It's sure that Chinese civilization starts beside the Yellow River, and in Han Dynasty, the Emperor Han Wu Di has financed a geographic research. Finally, they find the source of Yellow River is in Yutian. Also, there's a mountain beside. But according to today's geographic research, the source of Yellow River is actually not at Yutian, and the Kunlun Mountain is merely a mythological mountain. Its location is mysterious, even though this explanation is false. It's already the most reliable information we can find from ancient recordation, so we don't even need to mention the others. However, this civilization can trust to thousands of years before. Yet compared with the ethnic history, civilization is much shorter. So that in order to know the origin of Chinese people, we should ask the archaeologist rather than historian. The archaeology in China is developed very late. The earliest archaeological research on Chinese people was started by Western archaeologists. Until today, the earliest primitive man we can find in China is the Homo erectus wushanensis. It was found in Longping village, Miao Yutong, Chongqing municipality in 1985, which is 2.01 million years to 2.04 million years before. Some of this primitive man's age is controversial. The Homo erectus yuanonesis has two different ages, 1.7 million years and 500 to 600 thousand years. Actually, 500 to 600 thousand years is more scientifically right, and 1.7 million years is more politically right. Regarding before finding the Homo erectus wuxianensis, 1.7 million years is the earliest. Maybe the dispute will last forever, because we can only find little proof for each primitive man. The Homo erectus pekinensis is the most possible Chinese ancestor, but nothing is 100% sure. The only thing we know is that China is one of the birthplace of human beings. From the most present primitive men, we can find some interesting products. Since their culture can be divided into two groups by its significant materials. The painted pottery and the black pottery. So which one is possibly the origin of Chinese culture? From this map, we can see that black pottery culture are located in the east and painted pottery culture in the west. There are some recordations about the cultural behavior. One, the king will not kill a bull without a reason. The minister will not kill a sheep without a reason. The officer will not kill a dog or pig without a reason. But fish and turtles are the common food. 2. The material of clothes is mainly flax and silk. Clothes are big. 3. The people live on trees or live beside lakes. 4. The common currency is shield. 5. In religion, they respect very much the dragon and the snake. 
This information is enough to prove that the Chinese ancestors are living beside the southeast of coastal regions, so that black pottery is possibly the foundation of its culture, and painted pottery is an outcomer. The Chinese character Qi in ancient books is equivalent to another character Qi, means the center. Ancient people are lack of geographic consciousness. They will think that the place they live is the center. In several ancient books, there are some remarkable information. Qi Zhong Ye And also, Zi Qi Zhou Yi Nan Dai Ri Wei Dan Xue Bei Dai Dou Ji Wei Kong Tong Dong Zhi Ri Suo Chu Wei Da Ping Xi Zhi Ri Suo Ru Wei Da Meng so that seems there is no doubt that the Qi state is the birthplace of Chinese ancestors. But where is this Qi state in ancient books? There was a Qi vassal state in history. Even though we are not sure this is exactly the Qi state in ancient books, but generally, it will not be too far away. There is another recordation. Zhong Yu Dai Yue. Dai Yue is a Mount Tai. In history, it was the place to hold religious rituals, and its location must be relevant to our birthplace. Like all other ancient civilizations located in the downstream, Chinese culture might have started around the downstream of Yellow River instead of its upstream. If we take an overview of all Eastern Asian nations, we will find that there are three major groups of nations, located in the north, the middle, and the south. Their way to deal with here is quite different. North people have long braid, middleland people have long hair and put their hair into the hat, and south people have very short hair. The Middleland people start to have contact with South people very early. So someone misunderstand that Middleland people and the South people are the same. This need to clarify. Middleland people and South people are different. South people cut hair and make tattoo on their body. In Middleland, cut hair is a torture called Kun. Make tattoo is another torture called Qing. Middleland people use South people's culture as tortures. We can imagine that the Middleland and the South fight each other long through the history, and the Middleland people has enslaved a lot of South people. Li is a specific product in Middleland. Recently, archaeologists find some products on the north side of Great Wall, which is similar to Li. It can be a proof that Middleland culture is diffusing to the north. To conclude, the Chinese ancestors live in between of North nations and South nations in Eastern Asia. It has assimilated other cultures and diffused its own culture all around, step by step. It becomes a cultural center in Eastern Asia. Thanks for watching. I'm Camillus. I have a message to the world. See you next time.